So, I'm Yannis Selin from the Finnish National Institute for Health and Welfare, which is a, a, a research institute in the mainland Finland. And, and we at the, at it's, and the abbreviation is THL, so I'm talking about THL. Uh, we at the THL, we conduct research on problem gambling in, in Finland. And my own, own speciality is research on, on the uh, Finnish gambling policy and, and uh, Finnish gambling system. Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, responsible gambling from evidence-based perspective. What we know in terms of research on, on, on those policy instruments uh, which work uh, uh, in order to prevent or, or reduce problem gambling. So basically, my approach is that the problem gambling, uh, sorry, responsible gambling is a, is a term that is uh, usually uh, mean, meant, uh, by it is usually meant uh, both public and private measures to reduce and prevent uh, problem gambling. So responsible gambling can be governmental uh, 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 program, but it can also be, as you also all, all very well know, uh, uh, program developed by the gambling operator. So from this perspective, we can talk, talk about uh, responsible gambling in terms of regulation and self-regulation. In terms of regulation, responsible gambling is a statutory uh, a policy. And usually, here are some characterizations of both regulation and self-regulation. Uh, from, from the governmental perspective, it's statutory, and you said the implementation is very strictly controlled and monitored. What are the effects? Is this, is this policy working? And so on. And we have uh, loads of evidence on the effective effectiveness of, of uh, certain policies, uh, uh, whether they are, whether the evidence is from, from gambling research or from other uh, related uh, fields, such as alcohol policy. Uh, but the problem with uh, this regulatory approach is that sometimes the uh, uh, these uh, uh, general population uh, instruments or policies they have low accept access acceptability among the population. We know that very well from uh, Finnish experiences regarding alcohol, for instance, that uh, uh, people regard many many regulations concerning alcohol. Uh, as over-regulation or patronage by the, by the state. And also the costs of, of this kind of official or governmental regulation are sometimes very high, or they can be high. Uh, when it comes to self-regulation, uh, it's non-statutory, uh, as I said earlier, and it's often based on customers' choices, like you said, saw in the previous, previous uh, presentation. So it's up, up to the uh, consumer's choice whether they will self-exclude or uh, use certain uh, consumption limits or time limits. So this is a difference from to the regulatory approach. So from the uh, government perspective, usually the regulations apply to, to the whole population or so certain uh, uh, high-risk populations. And we don't have that much evidence on the effectiveness of certain uh, specific uh, responsible gambling instruments. There's research is going on all the time and more evidence is gathering what is working and what is not working. But there isn't that much evidence as there is uh, regarding the, uh, uh, these, these kind of public, public policies. Uh, Self-regulation is usually easy to implement. Uh, it can be implemented upon the choice of the operator. Uh, usually, uh, the effects are hard to follow up. There is no, very few companies, I think, have, have any kind of follow-up measures, how, the, how these instruments are really uh, affecting the behavior of the, of the gamblers. And uh, what is the permanence of the, of the effect? That is also quite unclear at the moment. Okay, here are certain evidence-based policy instruments that have, have been uh, analyzed by many scholars. This, this is a, uh, these are based on, on uh, I think, four or five review 
reviews or meta-analyses of, of working uh, policy instruments. Okay, so these are working policy instruments in prevention and reduction of problem gambling. The green ones are that, those that are in use in Finland at the moment. So these are the restricting the availability of most harmful games. So we conduct an assessment of every, every new product that is introduced to the Finnish market regarding to the uh, gambling problem risk that this, this pro pro product might have. Uh, and there will be, I think, already in this year or at least next year, a new expert group who will assess every, every single game that will be introduced to the Finnish market. And then we have in Finland the monopoly system, which is also one of these evidence-based uh, policy instruments. Or on the other hand, a strict licensing system has been found, found to be also effective. And we have an 18-year age limit for all, all gambling products in Finland, both online and offline. Uh, but the problem, I, I would say that uh, a, a land-based dilemma is that uh, we very well know these effective uh, general population policy instruments, but still most of them are not used, even in Finland where, where gambling gambling regulation is quite, quite strict in comparison to, to many other countries. And same applies to, for example, to alcohol policies. We know what are the effective means, but those means are not used because often they are not very popular among, among the population, for, is, for instance. Uh, some of these instruments are not applicable to online environment at all, of course. It's really hard to restrict the number of Men, online venues, for, is, for instance. So, but you can see what are applicable to land pace and what is applicable to uh, online online environment. So, uh, but the main thing would I what I would like to st stress here is that uh, most of these instruments can can anyhow be adapted by the operators themselves if they are willing to do so. So they are they can be adapted to the uh, their own own uh, operations, if they are willing to do that, that is not uh, so. Even, even though these are basically public policy instruments, they can be adapted as self-regulatory instruments if if the operator in question is, is willing to do so. For instance, those mandatory pre-commitment, uh, the use of mandatory pre-commitment, so that every every client must set a certain certain loss limit or, or time limit before starting to use the, use the uh, services of the operator. But as I said, there is much less research on these online policies uh, and also the online regulation is still pretty much developing. It's not as, as developed as is the uh, offline regulation. So I think, also think that in Finland, for instance, there is a certain problem with the with that, that the, the legislation and regulation is still much based on this old uh, tradition of, of offline gambling, and still, and yeah, and yet the, the online gambling environment is uh, developing quite quite fast. So, the, our regulation perhaps hasn't been on, uh, developed on the same speed as the as the uh, online environment. So this is sort of an uh, online dilemma. There is the regulation and the online environment doesn't meet each other very well. And also there isn't as much uh, good research on the uh, effective policy instruments on the online environment. That's all I have to say now. Thank you for your attention.